In the evolving theater of modern warfare, where precision, agility, and intelligence define operational success, the Australian Defence Force has taken a decisive step forward with the deployment of the RQ-21A Blackjack, a tactical, uncrewed aerial system that promises to reshape Australia's approach to intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance. Ordered in March 2022, the Australian Army's acquisition of 24 RQ-21A systems marked a deliberate pivot toward expeditionary, runway-independent platforms capable of supporting both land and maritime operations. As of July 2025, the ADF's integration of this American-made, catapult-launched, skyhook-recovered drone has reached a critical juncture, with its operational debut during Exercise Talisman Sabre 2025 at Shoalwater Bay, Queensland, signalling a new chapter in Australia's military modernization. Yet, the path to full operational capability remains fraught with challenges, and the strategic implications of this deployment demand rigorous scrutiny. The RQ-21A Blackjack, developed by in situ, a subsidiary of Boeing, is no mere incremental upgrade. It represents a paradigm shift from the ADF's previous reliance on systems like the Shadow UAS. Where the shadow required graded runways and cumbersome ground control stations mounted on trucks, the Blackjack's compact footprint and innovative recovery system, utilizing a skyhook to snatch the drone mid-flight, afford unparalleled flexibility. Captain Harry Gray, battery second in command of Task Element Dragon from the 20th Regiment, Royal Australian Artillery, articulated this advantage during Talisman Sabre 2025. The Skyhook recovery system means we are not runway dependent. We just need an open area for it to glide into. This capability is not merely logistical, it is strategic enabling the ADF to project ISR and target acquisition capabilities across Australia's vast and often unforgiving terrain, from the arid outback to the maritime expanses of the Indo-Pacific. Exercise Talisman Sabre 2025, a biennial joint exercise with the United States and other allies, provided the proving ground for the RQ-21's integration into ADF operations. At Shoalwater Bay, the Blackjack was tasked with trace clearances for combined joint live fire exercises, observing the fall of shot for high-mobility artillery rocket systems and conducting ISR in support of divisional operations. These tasks underscore the system's versatility, offering real-time data to commanders while minimizing the physical and logistical footprint on the battlefield. Gunnar Aishan McNeil, a drone operator, emphasized the human element of this technological leap. The most rewarding thing about operating the RQ-21 is being able to work in a close-knit team and support the mission. Such sentiments reflect the ADF's focus on building cohesive units capable of leveraging advanced systems under high-pressure conditions. The Blackjack's technical specifications further illuminate its strategic value. Compared to the Shadow, it boasts longer flight times, greater operational range, and superior camera payloads, enabling enhanced situational awareness over extended periods. Its ground control stations, now compact enough to operate from laptops within protected mobility vehicles, represent a significant departure from the bulky infrastructure of its predecessors. This mobility enhances survivability, allowing operators to push controllers forward, extend operational range, and rapidly redeploy as battlefield dynamics shift. As Captain Gray noted, once that aircraft is running out of fuel, they hand it back to us, we recover it, and we get them a new one. 
This seamless cycle of launch, operation, and recovery positions the RQ-21 as a force multiplier capable of sustaining continuous ISR coverage in contested environments. Yet, for all its promise, the RQ-21's deployment is not without its complexities. The Australian Army's order of 24 systems, each comprising five air vehicles and two ground control stations, suggests a robust commitment to uncrewed systems, but the absence of detailed public updates on their operational status raises questions. As of July 2025, a single ex-post referenced the ADF showcasing the RQ-21 integrator, hinting at ongoing integration efforts, but the lack of confirmation regarding full operational capability suggests that training, testing, and logistical hurdles persist. The transition from acquisition to deployment is rarely linear, particularly for a system as sophisticated as the Blackjack, which demands specialized skills and infrastructure. The ADF's experience with the Shadow UAS, which required graded surfaces and larger crews, likely informs a cautious approach to ensure that operators like Gunnar McNeil are fully trained to exploit the RQ-21's capabilities. The strategic context of this deployment cannot be overstated. Australia's geostrategic position in the Indo-Pacific, a region marked by rising tensions and great power competition, necessitates a military posture that is both agile and resilient. The RQ-21's ability to operate in maritime environments aligns with Australia's need to monitor its expansive coastline and exclusive economic zone, particularly in light of increasing Chinese naval activity in the South China Sea and beyond. Moreover, its runway-independent design makes it an ideal asset for expeditionary operations. Whether supporting allied exercises like Talisman Sabre or responding to contingencies in remote areas, the U.S. Marine Corps' use of the RQ-21 in Australia during 2020 exercises at Bradshaw Field Training Area demonstrated its suitability for local conditions, offering a blueprint for the ADF's own deployment strategy. However, the RQ-21's integration must be viewed through a critical lens. The system's reliance on American technology raises questions about supply chain vulnerabilities and interoperability with Australia's broader defense architecture. While the Blackjack's performance in Talisman Sabre 2025 is encouraging, the ADF must ensure that its operators are not only proficient in its use, but also capable of adapting to evolving threats, such as electronic warfare and counter-drone measures. The compact ground control stations, while advantageous, may also introduce cybersecurity risks that require robust mitigation. Furthermore, the ADF's relatively modest order of 24 systems, while significant, may strain to meet the demands of a theater as vast as the Indo-Pacific, particularly if simultaneous operations across multiple domains are required. Looking ahead, the RQ-21's deployment signals Australia's intent to remain at the forefront of military innovation, but its success hinges on sustained investment in training, maintenance, and doctrinal development. The ADF must resist the temptation to view the Blackjack as a panacea. Rather, it should serve as a cornerstone of a broader uncrewed system strategy that integrates with crewed platforms and emerging technologies like artificial intelligence. The system's performance in Talisman Sabre 2025 offers a glimpse of its potential, but only through rigorous operational testing and real-world application will its true value be realized. In conclusion, the RQ-21A Blackjack's deployment marks a pivotal moment for the Australian Army, offering a glimpse into a future where uncrewed systems redefine the battlefield. 
Its operational debut in Exercise Talisman Saber, 2025 underscores its versatility and strategic relevance, but the path to full integration remains a work in progress. As Australia navigates the complexities of a contested Indo-Pacific, the Blackjack's success will depend on the ADF's ability to harness its capabilities while addressing the logistical and strategic challenges of modern warfare. The skies over Shoalwater Bay may herald a new era, but only time will reveal whether the RQ-21 can deliver on its promise as a cornerstone of Australia's defence.